Hey, my name is Eric Hoven. I'm the president of Creation Today. My brother-in-law is the shipping manager there, and uh, we recently got to go on a trip to Peru. It was pretty incredible. My name is Vanessa. I'm going to be your local guide here in the city of Lima. I'm going to share today some of the most important uh, visits about my city. Lima was your typical third world country that had a lot of tourism there in pockets of Lima. Uh, there were several areas and several points that for me uh, took me back to when I used to live in a third world country. We're here in the city of Lima, Peru. This is where the city was founded. Behind me is the presidential palace where Pizarro lived and was actually killed while eating dinner. He was stabbed through the back with a sword. His body is supposedly buried at the Catholic Church to our right, but uh, latest scientific research says that that is actually not his body, it's another conquistador's body. Wow, bad way to go. I couldn't believe when we were at that museum where they actually had carvings of dinosaurs in the pottery. I mean, they had one of the largest collections in the world of ancient pottery. And here were carvings of dinosaurs on these pieces of pottery. I mean, that blew my mind. I'm going, we're seeing evidence right here of what so many hundreds of thousands of people were trying to say doesn't exist and it was it was incredible wasn't it? it it was and i think what was even more interesting was that the fact that it wasn't just dinosaurs they had all of your animals depicted there in the pottery you had your birds yep. your frogs snakes your fish reindeer. your snakes you had everything and then you had your water dragons and you had your dinosaurs Museo Marco Museum, and one of the things we're looking for is artifacts that could have carvings of dinosaurs or dragons on them long before we were ever supposed to know about them. Look what we found. This is incredible. Check this out. Here's a headdress that is somewhere around the neighborhood of 1,200 years old. I mean, we're talking a thousand years before we discovered the bones of dinosaurs, yet look what's on this headdress. It's a, what they describe as a dragon-like animal. And you can see the plates on his back, his long tail, and definitely dragon-like head. Amazing. The question is, how did they know about this 1,200 years ago? When we finally got to the Cabrera Museum, which houses thousands of Ica stones, it blew my mind. Dr. Cabrera's daughter has actually taken over the work that he's done there, and uh, she will open up the museum uh, for private tours. And so I was blown away at all the different dinosaur stones that have been found there. And 
what was fascinating for me seeing these Ica stones was not just that it was the dinosaurs and man. There were other carvings of constellations. There were carvings on these Ica stones of um, surgeries, of trepidation. And it just shows the advancement in their technology that they had at that time. You know, we have to admit there is controversy that's surrounding the Ica stones because there hasn't been a lot of peer-reviewed scientific research done on them. People that are going there claiming, oh, a farmer made those stones. We went to the gravesite out in the middle of the desert and they've actually uncovered some of these mummies, these people that were buried and here, here they are perfectly preserved. Fingernails on them, eyeballs swollen up in the sockets, hair still on them. So the Ica stones uh, apparently are actually found, some of them are actually found buried with these mummies and they've been sitting there undisturbed for hundreds of years. I mean, there's more than just the Ica stones though. You go to the museums and you see dinosaurs on their, on their masks, on some of their headdresses. Um, Things like, there are just, it's more than just that that lead us to say, these, this culture knew about dinosaurs. 800 to 1200 years ago, they knew what a dinosaur was. What we see here, if we were to do it with a scientific method, if we made a hypothesis that, that God's word is true, that the Bible is true, then of course people and dinosaurs would have lived together. And as we go on the journey for scientific evidence of man and dinosaurs coexisting, we find it. One of the places is here in Peru. We're here at the airport getting ready to take off to go see the Nazca lions, which I hear are really cool. But even if they're not really cool, I got something even better. Souvenirs! We got it made. The Nazca lines were really impressive. I mean, here you've got straight lines that go for miles, some of them. How in the world did they make these lines without, you know, something from the sky? You know, some people think they could fly. What's interesting about the spider, this spider is found in a cave, not even in South America. The spider is one eighth of an inch long. The eighth leg of the spider during reproduction on the male spider, the eighth leg actually grows uh, longer and that's how it actually transmits its sperm to the female spider. How in the world are the people of Peru gonna know about this thing an eighth of an inch long and then why would they draw a picture of it? How big was their picture? huge. Big. The really cool thing is we asked the pilot, said, hey, we want to see the dinosaur. And that I actually started feeling better towards the end of the mm -hmm. flight because we went to see the dinosaur. And here you had carved into the ground something that looks like a stegosaurus or a styracosaurus. The pilots called it, oh, you want to see the dinosaur? And they acted like it was no big deal. Yeah, let's take them and go show them the dinosaur. And our, our my pilot got lost on the way back. So. Nice. We don't know if they're FAA approved pilots or not. You know, according to the evolution worldview, uh, man today is supposed to be kind of the highlight, the, the supreme, the highest evolved that's ever been exi in existence. But what we discover as we travel around the world and as we look at ancient civilizations, they were smarter than us in a lot of ways. They knew things and they could do things that we cannot do. For example, when you go visit, uh, they, they actually pronounce it Saksa a woman, which is, you know, they say sexy woman is the name of it, uh, this place. There are stones there that we cannot move today. I mean, huge, huge pieces of solid rock that fit so close together, you can't slide a piece of paper in between them. I mean, they, with, with no mortar. They built things that today we cannot build. That's amazing. These stones are not native to this area either. So they were carved from a long ways away, 
hauled over here using uh, bamboo, uh, round rocks, slippery mud to push the stones here. And uh, wow, I'm impressed. Glad I didn't have to live back then and do that. Just because they're an ancient civilization doesn't mean they're primitive at all. When you find out that they did brain surgeries and they actually show some of the skulls where the, uh, the skull has actually started to grow back. So the person survived this brain surgery, okay? Others, you know, the holes right there and no br bone growth ever grew back. So uh, I guess the doctor slipped a little when uh, he was working on that guy. But uh, when you see these things, it shows they weren't primitive at all. I mean, the whole evolution idea of long ago it, they were dumb, now we're smart, get rid of it. We're here at one of the famous aqueducts. There's over 50 of these found and it's what the people still today use to get their water and to water the farms and the plants and even people getting their drinking water. Uh, these are around 1500 years old. It's quite a feat of engineering what they did that long ago. We're here at Rose's house. She ministers in the shanty towns and the villages that we've shown you pictures of. And uh, everybody was asked to bring some supplies, medical supplies, pencils, pens, coloring books, things like that for the kids, for her to use to give to the kids. And for them, just a, a simple pencil is something that's incredible. So we brought some medical supplies that were given and everybody's brought some gifts that they're gonna be giving to her to help them minister. The living conditions, I, I've been there and I've experienced that before, so uh, being able to see a family of 12 or 15 fit into just a little Box. hut, grass yeah. hut. Uh, so for me it wasn't anything new, but it was definitely a tremendous blessing to be able to take some medical supplies and clothes and other things that we actually took down there the lady who actually does mission work to the shanty towns, she said that just over one pencil or a band-aid or just one little item that we take for granted for every day, they would line up throughout the whole village just to wait to get that one item. So we're definitely have it uh, very, we're definitely very blessed here. And the medical right. supplies, I mean, you gotta understand, we, we take for granted that when we get a headache, we can go take an Advil or take an aspirin. I mean, they, they needed it, this stuff. I mean, there are children there that die because of lack of medical attention. And when, when we drove past and, and when we stopped and when you look at these shanty towns and it's just an entire city of nothing but, but people living in a little bitty square with they buy these little walls made out of literally grass that are woven together. I mean, grass walls, that's what they get in the middle of the desert. Uh, and they cook outside a lot of them over a little bitty open fire and um, I tell you every kid I tell you every kid every kid needs to go on a missions trip where they actually see how other people in the world live it will change their life if you're a parent and you never send your kid on a trip to another country to experience what a lot of the world experiences today you're doing a disservice to your children At sunrise, we've made it up to the majestic Machu Picchu. And you have to ask, why in the world did they build a civilization up here? But it is breathtaking. It's beautiful. Absolutely amazing. Ma Machu Picchu was actually, probably for me, the highlight of the trip. To be able to go to just an absolute incredible city, uh, a what some people would call prehistoric or just an advanced um, to me to see the advancement and the technology that these Incan Indians had to build this fortress 14, where no one above sea level. could get to them 
uh, and to protect themselves from the Spaniards uh, and to, to see how they did this was absolutely the highlight for me in this trip. Uh, it, it was very interesting to see the, the way they built it, um, the significance of the spiritual meanings to them at, as they built this. Uh, but it was definitely interesting to see as we as we hiked to the very top of the mountain and uh, were able to get the overview of Machu Picchu. It was just for me that was definitely was the icing on the cake, and it was a, a highlight of the trip yeah. to be able to see Machu Picchu. We still today don't know how they moved a lot of these stones. I mean, and and the the amount of work that was done here is just phenomenal. <laughs> the guide even told us about this one theory about how dinosaurs might have helped keep uh, move some of these stones. <laughs> how ridiculous is that? I absolutely loved the trip. Uh, I was very excited, like I said, to go to Peru. Uh, this is the first time I've been there. Um, the things that I learned, uh, obviously, were things that I've heard about, uh, but not being able, but being able to see them for the first time in in real person. To be able to travel down to Peru and to be able to see the the Ica stones of where all they were, all the Ica stones, and to be able to see the pottery and, and the aqueducts and just all the things that we hear about, but being able to actually see it. Um, I would love to do the trip again. D uh, Dr. Swift was an incredible tour guide and coordinator to who put this whole thing together. Uh, everything was um, top class, minus a few mistakes that locals made, not Dr. Swift, but uh, it was just an incredible uh, trip. The, the things that uh, I guess I struggled with was being a, a flatland boy or from <laughs> Florida here. Uh, when we hit the altitude, uh, was that it 14,000 feet? We were laid up for about a day and a half, just, just flat out on the bed, couldn't move, miserable because of the altitude sickness. Well, thanks so much for joining Paul and I on our adventures around Peru. It truly was an incredible trip. I hope you'll take away a couple of things. First of all, ancient civilizations doesn't mean they were primitive. Evolution is not happening when it comes to that. We are not necessarily smarter than they were. We have a different use of technology. Doesn't mean we're smarter. Um, number two, I want you to take away that these people, my homeboys down there in Peru, saw dinosaurs. They knew about these creatures, okay? So... When you hear an evolutionist say dinosaurs lived millions of years ago, that's simply not true. Dinosaurs and man have always lived together.